Artificial intelligence, or AI, is taking over everything and making people fearful about the future of affiliate marketing and blogging. In fact, a lot of entrepreneurs and those who are just thinking about trying to get started in the SEO and blogging industry are just terrified and scared about even getting into it to the point to where I ended up making a podcast episode that was dedicated directly to safeguarding your mental health when it comes to all of this AI stuff that seemingly is a complete onslaught to what we do for a living. Well, with all of that in mind, I'm going to discuss with you a strategy that I'm going to be using that not only beats artificial intelligence and AI, but you will be able to see your affiliate marketing business continue to grow despite everything that's going on and you might be hearing. Let's talk about it. What's up? My name is Chris. and I'm a full time dad, blogger and podcast host. And here we talk about building passive income streams that work for you so you don't have to. So if you want help to build those streams, consider subscribing. And if you want help to build your side hustle business to the point to where you could possibly quit your nine to five job, even as a complete beginner, check out the free course that I have inside my premium community over at oneblogaway.co. That's oneblogaway.co. And just for signing up, you'll get the free course and a chance to work with me one on one. Now, let's get into the episode. So I had a pretty interesting encounter with my niece. And you might be able to relate with this, especially if you have nieces and nephews or kids. Um, she's about 10 years old. My son isn't quite that old yet, so he hasn't necessarily come across this problem. But she is learning her multiplication tables. Now, I remember trying to memorize my multiplication tables. It was a little tough. I mean, I was like third or fourth grade, I think. It was something kind of crazy. And I always felt like the kids were just a little bit further ahead of me than, than I actually felt. But to be honest, we were all probably around the same in the same boat, but it still was tough, you know, trying to memorize what multiplies to this and then equals to that. But once I finally got it, I didn't give up on it, obviously. And um, I felt accomplished. You know, I finally got it and finally got something and everyone else was getting it too and was learning it onto the next thing. And that's what you normally do when you're in third or fourth grade, you know, especially if you're going to grade school. Now, what made multiplication, at least in the beginning part of it, hard for me was having to multiply two and three digit numbers, right? I don't know if you remember that, but you had, I used to use a long multiplication to do that, right? So you'd write the numbers and then you'd multiply this number times that number three times and you got to go all the way through. It's, it is a little bit daunting and a little bit complicated if you've never had to experience it. Now, my niece walked up to me and she needed some help with her math homework. And I felt great because, I mean, I've been doing this math thing for years. I've had it since I was about 10 years old. So, I mean, come on, let's go ahead and figure this out. And uh, I was really ready to help her out of a jam. I felt like I could really, you know, give something back, you know, so that she can understand this multiplication stuff and then move on with her life. And uh, I started showing her just like I learned multiplication, right? Using long multiplication and doing this whole little thing. So I grabbed a piece of paper. She gave me the two numbers and I went to town, started writing down everything. And after I was done, I was so proud and knew that I had helped her and that she was learning multiplication. And if she had any questions, I was ready to answer it. I, I was ready to go. Right. I, I felt great. Um, but then she looked at me and then she looked at the paper and saw all of the chicken scratch basically that I had put on there. I mean, I had came to the right answer, but she looked at me like I had written some hieroglyphics. Like, honestly, she was like, what is this? You know, she had no idea what I was doing with this long multiplication. And to be honest, I kind of felt de uh, deflated because I was like, what do you mean you don't know how to do this? How are they not teaching you this, right? This is the way you do multiplication. So then she was like, wait a second, uncle, hold on. And then she had a, a problem that she did get correct earlier and she drew a box and then she cut it up into like three, three or four different boxes. And then she started putting the numbers in there and breaking it down. So this, if you, you probably notice if you have any kids who are learning this or have learned this, it's called box multiplication. This is brand new to me. I had never heard of it before in my life, but you're basically breaking up your numbers from the tens, the hundreds and the ones or whatever. And then you essentially just add everything. So there's not really any real multiplication going on. You're just adding everything based on, you know, what you've put together so far. That was a little weird for me. I understood the concept, but it looked just as complicated as, you know, what I was doing. So what made it different? So what I had to realize was that even though we had totally different ways of getting there, we still got to the same answer. 
So the idea was taking these two numbers and multiplying them or adding them using the box method or using what I was using, long multiplication, whatever it had to be. I realized that as you're going through this whole process, at the end of the day, you're still trying to get the same thing. And it, it helped remind me of this marketing principle that I heard a long time ago. Unfortunately, I can't remember who said it, but it was that tools change all the time. Techniques change some of the time, but principles remain the same. So what does all of that mean? We must apply that same logic of tools changing, techniques sometimes changing, but principles never changing. We must apply that same logic to our websites and the traffic sources that we use to fuel those websites. The way we get uh, web traffic to our websites, it's changing. But here's the thing. It's always changing, right? But if we learn the basic principles of what a traffic source is, right? A traffic source is just getting people from one place and then sending them to our website, whether it's Instagram, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Google, whether it's Pinterest, whatever we happen to be using. Those are traffic sources that we are getting to our website. We just have to learn the basic principles of those traffic sources if we really want our affiliate blogs to continue to grow in all of this AI revolution that's happening right now. This works regardless of the traffic source, by the way. If it's Google, it's going to work. If it's TikTok, it's going to work. If it's a social media network that doesn't even exist right now, this principle is going to still work. Today, it's still quite hard to deny that Google is the greatest traffic source that you could ever have to your website. And to be honest, in my opinion, that's going to continue being the case, at least for the foreseeable future, to the point to where I'm still building blogs, and you should too. But the technique that I'm going to be using, because remember, techniques change some of the time. The technique that I'm going to be using to continue building my affiliate websites is topical authority. Topical authority. And why is this? Because the principle is that we want to get, we want to work with Google to answer questions. We want to work with Google to keep people coming back to Google over and over again. That answers so many questions. When we think that Google is changing here or we're changing this and they're changing that, how are we going to get our websites to ever rank? At the end of the day, Google just wants people to keep using Google. And to me, all of the research I've done over the last year, and especially since I've been using the uh, Topical Maps Unlock training from Yao Yao, uh, it's an amazing you know, way to build a website. By the way, if you want to check out that course, I will leave a link down in the description. So there's a few things that topical at building topical authority will do for your website that completely works with what Google wants. And because of that, we are going to be insulated from any changes that Google will ever have to make. You know, when you're out there in these Facebook groups and on YouTube channels and you're, and you're hearing all of these people just scream at the top of their lungs that SEO is dead and that it's not working and people are complaining and being toxic and making you not even want to do anything, these people are nine times out of 10 doing things that they probably shouldn't be doing on the website. And even if they don't know what they're doing is wrong, they might be following some advice that's wrong. But if they stuck to the core principles, the core principles that building up topical relevance and topical maps on your website solves, then they would avoid a whole world of hurt, even if they were to get by, get hit by an algorithm update. Because at the end of the day, the algorithm is going to end up working with you and you're going to have a big, hustling, bustling website. So what are some of the things that building a topical map will do for you that helps you work toward the principle of what Google actually wants. Now, before we get back to the podcast, are you a website owner looking to make more money with your website? Well, look no further than Ezoic. Using machine learning, Ezoic creates personalized ad experiences for every visitor on your website, increasing the revenue while also balancing the user experience. I use Ezoic on my sites, and I think you should as well. And with Ezoic ads, publishers can connect with money-making popular ad networks and exchanges, completely streamlining the process for getting ads onto your site quickly and with little intervention on your part. 
Plus, with AI optimization and mediation, bloggers and publishers make more money and keep people on their sites longer, which is good for your website's SEO. So unlock the true earning potential of your website by enrolling your site with Ezoic Ads. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned publisher, start your free trial over at Ezoic.com. That's E-Z-O-I-C dot com. Now, let's get back to the episode. Well, number one, remember this. Relevance is everything. And this isn't something that's that's new, right? Relevance has always been the case when it comes to Google. Even back in the early 2010s, late, you know, late 2000s, uh, 2009, 2010, people would just create content that had a whole bunch of keywords in it over and over again, a thousand times. And that's what made them rank because that's what the Google search engine thought was more relevant. But then came Hummingbird update, Penguin update, Panda update. All of these things happened and it completely flipped the landscape of how Google was ranking websites. So since relevance is everything, how can we continue to build sites that are almost immune? I mean, and I mean that almost immune to Google algorithm updates is to continue working with being relevant as possible with our websites. You see, when we build a topical map, for a website, a nice planned out, well-defined coverage of a particular topic or entity. This helps Google to understand what our website is about because it helps Google read our websites very easily. And it does that because your internal linking strategy is actually very intentional. It's not just haphazard. A lot of tools that we use in this industry, specifically like uh, Link Whisper, one of my favorite tools to use, I will be honest. But if you're not careful and you just let the AI just spray uh, internal links everywhere on your site, you're going to kind of confuse Google as to what the most important pages on your site are. And we'll get into that more later. So that's number one. Relevance is everything. Number two, being lost in a sea of content. Now, with AI tools coming out today, the one thing that we need to be kind of worried with is that at the end of the day, we're all using GPT 3.5. GPT 3.5 Turbo, GPT 4, and it's just going to you know improve from there. But at its core, regardless of the tool that we're using, I don't care what tool you have to be using, they all call back to that same large language model. So because of that, when we all create the content, all, the world is, or at least in the internet, is going to have this big influx of content that all looks the same, all written at about the same relevance because they're all built with the same tool, essentially. So how can we uh, uh, stop ourselves from being lost in this sea of content? Well, again, a topical map is going to help you go in deep. It's going to help you create more content on your website that shows that you are an authority in a particular space. And it does this because as you're putting together your topical map, you're not just looking at what's ranking in Ahrefs. You're not just looking at what's ranking, you know, in Google. You're looking up websites that have the traffic. You're looking at websites that have the authority and you're pulling up site maps. You're seeing what types of keywords they're targeting and you're including it in your topical map. And you do this and you do this and you do this. And then you're going to, because you're reaching outside of just going to chat GPT and saying, build me a topical map for this subject. You're going to go a level deeper than everybody else who doesn't want to do the work just from you doing a little bit of extra. That's how we're going to separate ourselves from being lost in the sea of the same content. And that's where topical maps really comes in to be helpful. Another problem that sometimes uh, uh, a lot of trainings out there will tell you to go for is only going after low competition keywords. Now, I will be honest. I used to be of that type years ago. I told people just go after low competition because at the time that's what was working. That was the technique. But the new technique now is continuing to go with topical maps and not just creating content because we can rank for it, but creating content and showing Google that we actually know what we're talking about and that we're trying to completely cover a topic. So if you're an SEO, you might be hearing that and thinking, oh my goodness, so you're saying I'm gonna have to write content that's not going to rank, that doesn't even have a shot at ranking. And to be honest, 
Yes, you will. There's some articles that you are going to end up writing that are probably not going to have a chance at ranking anytime soon. But the content that you create around it, that will have a chance at ranking uh, sooner rather than later. And if you do your internal linking correctly, then those higher volume keyword pages are going to end up being seen by Google over and over and over again because you keep internal linking right back to it. You see, these uh, topical maps are gonna help us to attack keywords that are not just low competition, but also some that have a shot at really making a significant change with our bank accounts with these websites. Not just going after low competition stuff and then just having you know a whole bunch of articles that you wrote that you didn't know if it had traffic or not, but you're just taking the chance because no one else is the zero competition, the zero uh, search competition, you know, articles that you might be writing. Those still work decently well, but if you build an entire site just doing that, you're going to end up with two or three hundred articles and ten thousand page ten thousand page views per month. That's not what we want. Right. We want more traffic to our sites. And usually, you know, sometimes when you write content that you have no shot at ranking for, but you cover it because of your topical map, you'll realize that you're going to start ranking for some of those eventually. And you're going to start getting traffic and you start getting major traffic to your site to probably more monetized heavy pages on your site, which is really going to help you get more traffic to your site, but most importantly, make more money with your business. Another thing that topical maps help with is to distribute the authority that you have maybe on one page to your site so that it can kind of touch every other page on your website. You see, when you have a whole bunch of articles on your site and one of them happens to rank number one and some journalist somewhere decides to link to your site from a really high authority newspaper or whatever, you're going to end up getting a lot of link authority or like we like to call link juice onto that one article. But if we're not internal linking to it correctly and we don't have it in a nice tightly knit silo or category or whatever you want to call it, then that link juice is going to be stuck on that one page. But Topical Maps helps us to be a little bit more intentional with our internal linking strategy. And because of that, if one random informational post gets a really decent backlink, that authority is going to go everywhere on the site and benefit every single page on that site. Remember the old phrase that a rising tide raises all ships? If one article gets a lot of backlinks, the whole website is going to end up benefiting because of it. So that's another reason why Topical Maps is great or topical maps are great, however you want to say it. Um, sometimes when it comes to building up content as well on our websites, you know, we'll go to a Low Fruits or a Keyword Chef or an Ahrefs or SCM Rush, whatever you we're using to get keywords. And we are building up our site with a whole bunch of, I'm gonna work on here and then I'm gonna go work over there. I have this category over here. I have this silo over here. And you're kind of building the content a lot more erratically than you need. Topical maps help solve that as well. It helps you to make well-researched and dedicate and have a dedicated approach to how to build your site. This does not need to be all willy-nilly, you know, where you get an article and you get an article and this category gets an article. That's the quickest way to nowheresville, okay? You want to build your sites one category, one silo, one content hub at a time. And when you do that, you're going to show Google that, okay, in that one silo, in that one particular content hub, this website knows what it's talking about and we are going to reward it more traffic. This is important for Google because they want to me, they want to be absolutely sure that you know what you're talking about and you're not just a random AI tool that's hallucinating and just creating anything that you want at the time. I saw recently uh, a news report where a lawyer had completely used ChatGPT to come up with some document and submitted it to the courts. And when the courts got it and looked at it, they were like, oh, this is, this makes sense. This is cool. And then he looked at it and realized that the ChatGPT or the AI completely made up a case that never existed just because, you know, but it, because it's so good at being wrong intentionally and just because, you know, AI has no conscience, right? It doesn't care. And it just spit it out like it was fact. And everyone believed it because it sounded so good, right? That's the problem that we have. Google needs to fight that. And the best way that they have to fight that is to make sure that you're a real person, that you are showing proper 
topical coverage on your website in a particular category, silo or content hub. And that's what we are going to do when we start using topical maps to start building up our website. Another benefit of the topical maps that will help separate us from everyone else is that it helps with uh, uh, putting our blogs together to begin with. You see, topical maps tells you what keywords you need to include in your article based on that uh, uh, cluster, right? So when you have this cluster of keywords, it tells you what keywords need to be included in an article. That means there's no more guessing. Right. And in some instances, you might be able to get away with not having to use a SEO optimization tool because you've already done the research that the tool does for you. This is great. This is wonderful. It tells us what subheadings we need to use on a website. It tells us what articles we need to use. We tell us what keywords to use in those articles. This is what's going to help us be more directional and more intentional in how we need to be building up our websites. Another problem that Topical Maps solves is it helps you rank more important pages on your website. Now, we referenced this a little bit earlier before, but one of the probably lowest used ways to really get articles to rank on our website is internal linking. And we need to be able to link to the most important pages on our website if we want to show Google how important that page happens to be. And if we want to have like a top 10 page or a buyer's guide or something like that, our money pages on our site, we want to get as many internal links post pointing to that article as possible to give it the best shot at ranking because we're giving it a lot of the authority that our website already owns, that one page. That's another thing that Topical Maps is going to help us to do because we're going to be more intentional with this. We don't have to go into a website and just figure out, well, maybe I'll link here or maybe I'll link there. No. When we put together our topical maps, it just makes sense because we had a predefined intentional strategy to get things up and running. This is something I've been doing for a long time. I just didn't really call it a topical map and didn't really realize that's what I was doing. But now I'm being, but I was never really great at the internal linking part of it. Now I am because I learned the right way to do this. And this is how I'm going to be building sites from now on to separate myself from all of the other sameness that's out there and that will be out there as time goes on with our uh, with the internet and with Google. Working within the confines of what Google wants, it's what's going to give us the best shot at ranking pretty much any website that we want on our on the internet so that we can get more revenue, more traffic, and be able to do what we want to do with our lives. So if you want to learn the best way to build up a topical map, I don't claim to be an expert in this stuff at all. However, I want you to check out the video right there that goes into uh, Topical Maps Unlocked. It's a review of it, showing you a little bit of a taste on what's the inside, some of the benefits of uh, building up a topical map, and how to do it the right way. And I'll see you over there.